So, I, I don't know. Pitch, fat, and hair. Um, he made lumps thereof. This he put in the dragon's mouth, and so the dragon whoa, burst Whoa, 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 thunder. whoa, whoa. Dude, shut the fuck up. We didn't... There is no quest. There is no climbing mountains. It's just, yes, you could kill it. And so he took pitch and hair and buttons like, and strings the and cat whiskers, and he put them straight into this dragon's <laughs> mouth. When did he get to the dragon? <laughs> the dragon was like a mile away. Like everything it was, was, it was way just different. Laying back down then. with his mouth open. He sleeps like a. Well, that's normal for dragons, right? Yeah, He's sleeping on top of his gold. Between coins. him and the next water source. <laughs> yeah. Mouth is open. He's like, oh, I'm so hungry. Snoring. <laughs> the priests come to feed me. This is like the Achaemenid equivalent of, of feeding seagulls Alka-Seltzer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's basically what happened. Hello and welcome to another episode of Grown Up Christian. I'm Casey. I'm Sam. I'm Jeremiah. Yay, Jeremiah's back! back! Yay! Woo! You've been what? traversing the world, bailing water out of your basement, swimming with turtles and porpoises, cleaning July skunk smell off your dogs. Yep, July was a lot. Well, I don't want to take credit for that. My wife did most of the dog shampooing. Uh, yeah, it's been rough. It's what been was your trick? What was your uh, go-to uh, internet? I, I'm guessing you looked up on the internet how to uh, eliminate skunk smell from your dog and nothing worked like you hoped it would. Uh, no, I got to use the cheat code. My dad's a veterinarian or a retired veterinarian. So, and I was oh, on vacation. Game Shark, dog. Yep, I was on vacation with him when it happened. Wow, Game Shark, that's a reference. Uh, and so I asked him, I was like, hey, what'll actually work? And he said, you need to go buy this specific type of shampoo. So I told my wife that and she did and it worked. No, but, but I mean, what's the shampoo for everyone who needs, everyone needs to know this. It's like a charcoal, it's a charcoal shampoo for pets. So, I mean, I, I imagine there's only a couple different types of it, but you just go look it up. Charcoal shampoo for pets. It's Fuck. odor destroying. Now you still had to give them like three or four baths. Like there's only so much you yeah. can do, but it actually worked. It's a lot better. I've, like don't go buy a bunch of tomato juice. I've, do I've that. done that same thing. I did because uh, there's there's one stuff at like PetSmart and crap like that that works, but it takes several treatments and it's expensive. It's like a really runny, kind of oily feeling liquid, and it's a, it's like twenty five bucks a bottle or something like that. And like you're gonna use the whole bottle probably sure. in, in like two or three treatments, but. And when your dog smells that bad, you would spend $1,000 immediately to get it to stop. It's... What, I, what I didn't know, he got sprayed again like two weeks later. <laughs> Which is uh, fucking crazy. I think it's the same skunk just hanging out in our yard. But just vendetta but it, against your dog. Well, I've driven by so many skunks that like are dead on the side of the road and they smell skunky, right? I didn't realize like the burning acrid smell of like of, of live, a yep. fresh skunk spray. Once it gets into the house, like it's so much worse. It's like a putrid, putrid garlic and oniony kind of like rot scent. And like burns. Yeah. It's it, like yeah. Someone it burns, burns your sinuses skunk. and your eyes. Yep. Yeah. I've heard the that grossest that thing is like if they get sprayed and then like you look at them and you can see the spray. Yes, that's like, when my dog got sprayed, <laughs> my dog was all white and you could see like the oil mark across her face. Um, dude, Casey, it was when um, our uh, old, he was, God, you have to go far back in the catalog to hear old Chad Daniels on the podcast, but he was visiting with like two of his friends. He got picked, like they picked up a friend who walked the full Appalachian trail. And then we all went to Boston and hung out and we were all hanging out at my house that night. We're sitting out on my deck, not like just talking, drinking, having a good time. We all go inside. My dog runs in after us and it's like, Chad's like, Dude, I'm pretty sure your dog got sprayed by a skunk. <laughs> I was like, no fucking way. Like, we didn't smell it right away. And then once you smelled it, it was like, it, it was there. It took a minute to permeate the house, but I ended up putting my dog in the crate in the basement. Like, I washed her a bunch. I, I, I saw like the hydrogen peroxide suggestion. My dog was a Westie, so a full white dog. It's like a Karen Terrier, like the Toto dog for anyone who doesn't know from like, uh, Wizard of Oz. It's that, but completely white. And 
after giving my dog a bunch of Dawn and dish soap and hydrogen peroxide baths, her, f- it looked, I mean, it was the whitest fur you could have ever seen in your life. It was pure snow after all those baths. I don't think she'd been so white as, since the day she was born, but getting like, it's still, man. I mean, our laundry was like in the basement and I'm like, I swear like all of my laundry for the rest next week, just no matter how much I washed mm. it, it smelled like it gets into every fucking thing in your entire house. It's the worst. Well, it was competing in our basement because he ran inside and like rubbed his face on the couch and everything because his oh. eyes were burning. <laughs> but Man. he was competing with the smell of mildew from all of the flooding in the basement. So like, <laughs> you know, it, it kind of blended the stinky there. kid at work. Yeah, it's uh, I'm glad I work remotely. It was not great. The basement still has a little bit of a musty smell to it. We're really hoping we don't have to rip all the carpet out. Oh, God. Car- I didn't realize. Uh, I didn't know it was like a finished part so that uh yep. well, the makes old, it way the worse that originally was leaking is not finished uh but like there was so much water came in over the course of that weekend that some of it got under the carpet into the main part of oh, the basement no. and we've created oh. a dehumidifier since then you have a like, dehumidifier you're running constantly yep. now but it smells musty it wreck any drywall no uh drywall seems okay like because we were able to keep the level it was always really low because we were shop backing it up as it was coming in but we took out, I think, 150 gallons of water. Holy shit, dude. That's a lot yep. of water. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was bad. It was it was not a great weekend. I had to rip out a wall, like a framed in wall that was getting in the way, rearrange the whole like server room. It was it was a man. It was a really good time. Uh, dude, I'll tell you what, like when when I was still in college, I was I think it was between my junior and senior year at Liberty you know, I was, I was planning on proposing to April and I was like, okay, what, what are we going to do after the fact? And it was, you know, it's 2008 at the time. So great time in Michigan, especially, right? Great time People's to be alive. Prices. Thrive, and, thriving economy in Michigan in 2008. Yeah. Yeah. And there was just, there was foreclosed houses everywhere. So I remember that summer I was thinking like, well, there's all these cheap houses online and like, maybe we can just buy a house and we don't have to rent something like after we get married, you know, I wasn't planning on going back to Michigan at the time right afterwards, but I was like, I'm just going to go see what, what this is all about, what I can buy for, you know, I mean, some of these places are, they're like full fledged starter homes that are 10, 15 years old and they're going for like, you know, 40, 50,000 or something like nothing. And uh, so I went, we had a real estate agent that my family knew. So I got him to like, take me to a few of these houses. And so when they foreclosed the house, I don't know if it was the same everywhere or if it was especially in Michigan, but Michigan's everybody in Michigan has a basement and every basement has like a sump pump that just runs 24 seven. Like everything's below the water table in Michigan. Right. And when these like, why banks even do would, a basement at that point, why do they like in Texas, you don't have basements for that reason. Like, why are they yeah, doing I, basements? I don't know why they're so common there when that's the fact, but the, the banks, when they would repossess these houses, they would stop paying the utilities. So the companies would come off, come out and just shut off the electricity and the water and stuff like that. And these houses, if they were in a, the wrong spot, they would just fill up. So you're telling me you got a free fucking in-ground pool for a $40,000 house and you didn't bite? Dude, <laughs> I went into one of these places. He let me in and he's like, all right, well, you know, just so you know, some of these are some of these are pretty wild inside. And I'm like, okay, well, yeah, I mean, it's I can fix it up. I could learn how to do some stuff. You know, we can paint. We can do this and that and the other. We go into this house. It's right down the street from my parents' place, a little starter neighborhood. We open the front door and you can smell mildew immediately. It's heavy. So the family that had gotten foreclosed on and had left, had left the water running in the upstairs tub. And that's because they were like fresh off a murder suicide, right? (laughs) Yeah, maybe. But so like the whole ceiling had collapsed in the, in the, like all the drywall had collapsed in the dining room, which was directly below the uh you know the the bathroom upstairs right the walls had like mold spots the size of like manhole covers on the walls in the living room and we open the door to the basement and there's like maybe five steps and water 
So what Holy you're just shit. buying a lot of land at that point. Like there's no saving that house. People did. Yeah, people would gut them completely, and then you treat it with like an, you know, mold killing. You have to you have to tear out everything because yeah. like, it's a reno. You don't wall. you don't have to deal with all like the same level of permit pulling as like with new builds. It's like we're renovating. It was it was a disaster. I'm sure that that panned out really poorly for some of the people who who gambled on that. Because yeah, 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 I mean that mold comes back. I mean, mold is a nightmare. That's that's something that's like one of the largest deterrent i feel like if you see mold it's just like just just fuck out of there like there's no point in even because you don't know where it is like if there's a little bit what happened at, like i had friends who bought a house and it was like oh there's a, we found a little bit of mold it was there's no like problems disclosed they found out late they ended up in legal in a legal battle because they found out later that there had been a burst pipe that wasn't disclosed and it wasn't dealt with properly. So they're like, oh, there's a little bit of mold here. We should deal with it. And when they like knocked out like a portion of the drywall to get to it, behind it was just like black mold filling the fucking whole area where the pipe had burst. It's just killing your children. And they ended up, it ended up costing them over like 50 grand, 60 grand to like gut the whole kitchen, rent out the entire thing. And they were like, they, I mean, they were kind of at the top of their budget when they bought the house. So it was just like, they ended up, trying to sue the couple who sold in the house because they knew about it and nothing was to close. I mean, I don't really know where that ended up because it was, you know, that was an old college friend that you lose touch with. So I have no fucking clue how it panned out, but that shit would be, I mean, mold's a nightmare. You never, if you see a little bit, it's like, you can just guarantee that your life is over. If you like peel back the curtain a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. If you're, if you're listening to this and you're thinking of buying a house or you do in the future, Okay, you're going to be real excited about the house and you're going to want that whole thing to go through. You're going to be trying to move it along quickly. And there's a lot of little things that you have to pay for on your way to owning that house. It gets annoying and you start to like really just want to get it over with and get it done. Do not skimp on the the inspection. Maybe it feels unnecessary. Maybe the people are really nice. Maybe you looked it over and you thought everything looked great and there's just nothing to look at. Don't skimp on the inspection because you can buy an absolute nightmare. Oh, yeah. But, dude, what's crazy is there was a time where houses were turning so fast in my area. Like, the market was going crazy. Houses were on the market for three, four, five days. For, like, I, because I had a realtor come in, the, the realtor who sold my last house and helped me buy this one. I was, um, we're we're consider we're 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 talking about moving and the market is trash so and the interest rates are a nightmare so we're not going to now really consider it but um maybe seven eight months ago we had him come and do the whole like assessment on our house and stuff and he was like there was like a full year year and a half where not probably one house was getting inspected like the house the market was so crazy and you would lose like people were just saying if i will not they won't sell if people want to have a home inspection cuz they can the sell next it person it. will show up tomorrow and they they'll waive one yeah and that for like a whole year Good he's God. like people just didn't you couldn't if you wanted to buy a house between like 2020 and 2021 maybe maybe into 2022 a bit it was like you were you did not get a home inspection he's like when i had him come out like 7 or 8 months ago he was like Home inspections are just now a thing again. Like it's, it's like a, it's a given now again that you do a home inspection. That was I mean That's I was going to pay off I really lost, poorly for a bunch of people. Yeah, oh for sure oh, dude because my house when I sold my house in Worcester, uh it was like it, it was an old house but it was in good shape and there was only a couple of little things but it was still like the inspector came in and was like, "Oh, you need to do this has to happen, this has to happen, blah blah blah." It's like, "Oh shit." Like they're picking up on stuff that I'm not paying any attention to. Um, and it's stuff that has, it's not, you're, it's stuff that's not going to have an impact in the next six months, the next year or two or three. It's like, this needs a lolly column because if you don't in 10 years, it might finally snap. And it's just because you didn't have something that it, it cost you like 200 bucks to have someone come and put this in. It's not a big deal, but if you don't, it's a problem. So like shit, little shit like that. It's like, you don't, 
you don't want to go without. But if I bought a house when you couldn't have a home inspection, I would have. And it had I stayed there, that could have been a giant problem a decade down the road if I stayed in that house and nobody told me otherwise. Yeah, you buy some 200-year-old dump from a Boston rat person. It's all full of mold and skin flakes and all sorts of things, dryer lint. Yep. that's. In, I mean, <laughs> insulation in Boston is just all your years of accumulated dryer lint. That's all it is. <laughs> It's just Irish. It's just two hundred years of accumulated Irish dandruff. Irish insulation. That's what they call dryerland. <laughs> that feels racist, but I, I'm not sure how. <laughs> We're white, <laughs> dude. Okay, last last story before we move on. Uh, when when we sold our house in Michigan, it was like the reverse. That I, I we needed to sell it because we were moving switching jobs, everything, you know, and we had a hard time getting rid of it at the time. And, uh, we got all the way to the end and I had, we had no money. We were just like trying to get out of this thing. And they did the home inspection and they're like, your septic tank is like, <laughs> it's full, full. Exploding. You need to have this, <laughs> you need to have this pumped. You have to pay for this to be pumped. Right. And so I call this company and it was, it was like, it was so wild. Like the, this guy shows up in the big, the big turd truck, right? Yeah. <laughs> and he is, oh, just, just, he's inhuman. This is just like a, he's like a spawn character. Just this big, round, greasy, just filthy guy, right? And he comes like up to the house, knocks on the door. He's super rude. Um, and so I'm like, okay, well, so I, you know, I go outside with him to, uh, to show him where the, the tanks at and stuff. And he, you know, there's, there's pipe, there's like plumbing on the back of the truck that they hook up and then they pull the line out to your tank to pump it and stuff. This guy, he opens the little gate on the back and just black slime drips out of this thing. He has no gloves on. Ah. <gasps> He hooked this thing, he opened the, the flume, hooked up the, the pipe, and then went and pumped my tank with no gloves on. And I was just like, oh my god. And it dripped on my driveway, and I'm just like, what do I do with that? Like, <laughs> it wasn't very much, it but it was fire. like... <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. It's... When he opened your septic, it like bursts out like a fucking whale's blowhole, just raise up water <laughs> my dog licks it and turns into like a ninja turtles starts villain. glowing <laughs> immediately starts glowing <laughs> if i can yes and to that real quick um i have a one related story so i used to work landscaping and then after to so the summer of 2008 there were tons of foreclosed homes on the market even in the small town i'm from and uh so like we had a lot of homes that we were cutting the grass at that had been foreclosed on that like my boss worked out some deal with a realtor he was friends with or something so we'd swing by and we'd cut these houses but like we're doing just really quick cuts and stuff because we're not trying to make it look beautiful we're just trying to keep the grass contained while the bank figures out what they want to do uh and there was while this the one bank figures out who they want to fuck over yeah gotcha. I, look, look sam I'm, i was uh 18 and this I is an no indictment on you i'm just clarifying <laughs> Okay, that we're on cool. the same page with banks here. <laughs> yeah, like I, I don't know the backstory. Maybe these people were were mean. Maybe they were great. I have no idea. But they didn't live in their house anymore. And this house, this one particular one, was in a real low area of town near a river. And they always warned us. They were like, yes, yeah, house is really old. Like, just, you know, be careful. Like, the drain field looks like it's, you know, a little bit a little bit soft like just be careful we don't know so you know we always ignored that because we we cut over everything like it was we never had problems um we were using diesel zero turn mowers which are pretty decently heavy i don't know like a, a thousand pounds um they're not nothing and my Big boss machine. was oh yeah he was riding one through the backyard and we heard a whoo and he just started screaming like blood curdling screaming and we ran around and he had broken through the top of the septic system but there was a wall in between the two tanks and the mower was perched, like half perched on the wall. The deck was like dipping into the slime. <laughs> on the mower, oh, God. Us, like, get me off. Get me off. This. <laughs> like he unbuckled and ran and like gazelle jumped as far away from the mower as he could. <laughs> and we, like, we ran back to the, 
we ran back to the truck and we like hit straps like we have to get like we have to get the mower out of this if the mower falls into the septic tank like what are you gonna do <laughs> sorry wachovia yeah <laughs> Uh, but we were able to get the mower out. It really destroyed their yard, but it turns out the septic tank was like collapsing anyway. It was super old and was going to have to be replaced. But they weren't happy about itself. that. Yeah. <laughs> but like, I think at that point, like, I'm not saying you should think about killing yourself, but. <laughs> yeah, you stick a foot in that. That foot's got to go. <laughs> well, I'm thinking like if the whole mower fell in there, like if you'd think about it, you'd think about just not coming up. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I'll call it quits. <laughs> just ted kennedy that mower <laughs> <laughs> oh man it was a tragedy oh my god <laughs> so all right uh, is everybody ready to explore a, a, a story that that i think we all probably knew nothing about yeah okay i'm excited i'm pumped we were talking back and forth we uh we were group texts and and we're like, man, we haven't done a Bible story in a while. And Sam mentioned, dude, at some point we need to get into the Apocrypha, which the Apocrypha is like uh, the the Catholic bonus levels of the Bible. It's it's the Apocrypha is to the Bible what the director's cut is to Lord of the Rings. It's like a lot of extra material that's not necessary, but helps just give Whoa, you a, hold on a bigger I was picture. Say, you mean the only definitive version <laughs> that is the only one that you should be reading? <laughs> it's look, it's the Bible's director, Scott. That's all I'm saying. That's right, what the cool. apocrypha is. This is like the 18 it's unnecessary episodes. The Bible Snyder. Any... <laughs> <laughs> it's like 18 unnecessary episodes in any season of Dragon Ball Z where like <laughs> it's all about like Gohan needs a new pair of pants and it's 18 episodes. <laughs> You don't need them. They're there, I guess, if you want them. But nobody cares if they're gone. Except for Catholics, of course, because, you know, <laughs> just why, why not make things more boring? <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm willing to bet that things are going to be less boring diving into whatever story you're going to uh, provide us with than we might normally be when reviewing uh, any old book of the Bible, the old books that uh, we're familiar with. I mean, how many, I don't even know how many books are in the Apocrypha that I'm missing out on. I mentioned in our group text, I know the oh, book of Maccabees. Man, how many is it? And I know the book of wisdom. And the only reason I know the book of wisdom is because my grandfather died and I was a young lad. I had to uh, read out of the book of wisdom and I felt like it was like, is this okay? Like, am I doing something wrong? Because as far as I know, Catholics do something different that us Protestants don't. And we're right, and they're obviously wrong. So that means this is an extra biblical text that probably shouldn't... I, I felt uncomfortable even reading out of the Book of Wisdom. Uh, probably not as uncomfortable as my parents felt when my brother got up to read and didn't realize that uh, the altar wasn't the podium. And he stood behind the altar in a Catholic church, which is a big Excellent. no go. If uh, anyone who's never been to a Catholic church, there were like audible <gasps> gasps because it was like the priest goes back there. And if you're not a priest, you're condemned to hell. So I don't yeah, know. It's the uh, Holy of Holies. You're lucky was, you didn't uh, just get stricken dead. I know. And I've actually, what was cool is I made a lot of people that day realize that all of it was pretend and they left the faith because nothing bad happened to my brother. Yeah, you're that supposed to like wear a, a they, cowbell around your neck. You know, Sam, that sounds like a they all stood up and clapped moment. Yeah. <laughs> so there's there's 14 books in the Apocrypha. And so these are, I didn't know a lot about the Apocrypha. I'm not going to say I know much about them now, but um, it's basically like the original, what is it? The Septuagint was like the Greek translation of the Bible, right? Yes. That included... 14 books that are no longer in like traditional Bibles and they stayed a part of the Bible, you know, most Bibles up until like the 1800s. Um, it was pretty recent that the, that Protestants took them out. Um, Catholics canonized them. So they're still a part of the Catholic Bible, but it is really fun to watch videos about you know evangelicals talking about why these are not in the bible and it's it's just hilarious it's just like any of them that you click on one of their big complaints about them is going to be like well they're they're not written in hebrew 
you know, so that's that's strike number one. And and they say things that are really broad, like the Jews didn't know what to do with these books. They, you know, they weren't written in Hebrew and the Jews didn't really know what to do with them. And they didn't necessarily recognize them as inspired, you know, and blah, 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 blah. And it's like, yeah, the Jews don't recognize the entire New Testament as inspired. You don't have a problem and- they don't recognize a lot of their religious texts the same way. They don't consider their religious texts the same way that Christians do. Like you have, you have like the first five books of the Bible, which are the most important to them, but they have a lot of like extra biblical texts that are still very important to their li- their way of life and their tradition. Uh, it's not, they don't view their religious texts the exact same way that Christians do. So that's hard for them to wrap or conservative protestants i should say it's hard for them to wrap their mind around what the what the jews are doing with their scriptures <laughs> because they're like yeah. we, we stole it, made it better. what are you talking about <laughs> it, they, they say those things in the same way that they say like well carbon dating you know that's kind of a crock yeah it's carbon can you like, explain why <laughs> well, uh, well well they know, use carbon just, studies dating. have shown <laughs> They go, they used carbon dating on a recently exploded volcano. And because of the high levels of carbon, it said that volcano that blew up yesterday was that rock was 1 million years old. And you're like, that's because that's not how you use carbon dating. (laughs) You don't (laughs) use it on things that recently got caught on fire and burned. It's just. Yeah. So uh, these are kind of strange texts that, uh, it, it seems like there's a mix of ideas about them among like evangelicals. Some of them are like, well, these aren't the Bible, but they're interesting books and they provide some historical context, which is the Bible. They don't. <laughs> that I mean, is, that's the Bible, isn't it? Let's be they're honest. They're the Silmarillion. They're the Silmarillion yeah, the of the Bible. Bible. Yeah, that that's is. It, that is what it is. Which, okay, how did like, <laughs> how did numbers make it? Numbers made it in, but not some of these books. I don't know. And Maccabees, right. is dope. Maccabees is a great fucking book. It's like an epic. Honestly, why isn't why isn't the story of Maccabees a dope ass movie yet? It's only been an animated cartoon movie for children, and I don't agree with that. I think it should be a brutal three hundred style film, and it would be so sick. This, I mean, this it's a mantle. Like, I don't think anyone else is taking this mantle up, Sam. There's plenty of room for you to start this if campaign. Only I. A pursued the knowledge to be able to do something like that but instead i'm see here's the thing guys i'm an idea guy and that's ah. you know idea mm-hmm. people are the ones who think about things but actually have no usable skills or talents by which to produce their ideas so that's think what about things actually put in a lot of work 200 empty beer cans in their yeah, basement yeah. <laughs> sitting in their basement and what i'm pretty sure was your boxers drinking no, Miller dude, these are some just See you. I appreciate you pointing out what I was wearing. Uh, these are dope ass mesh shorts that I wear too much. I fucking love these shorts. Maybe I need to post a picture of them now because you call them out publicly. Maybe I mean there's a lot of thigh visible, which I'm I'm all on board I'm with. Thigh I guy. support you. Yeah, but it looked like your shirt was barely covering the shorts. Like what? My shirt's was... covering my look. You have you've got something on underneath them, right? Uh yeah, boxers. The, I'm I'm working you can't on wear the, mesh boxers. No, no, I'm working I mean, on like a rule. five inch inseam. That's my shorts. Okay, game, so okay, five right. inch inseam. They're just a little hiked up right now. Uh, and let's talk about the 200 beer cans that you saw. It's about 75, and they've been here for a while. And I would like to state, not that I need this on the record, but I will point it out because my you know occasionally my uh how much I drink does come up on this podcast. I have been doing a fantastic fucking job the past four weeks. I've, I've been drinking maybe once or twice a week. I've been exercising. I've been going, I've been going on runs five or six days a week and I've been working out three or four days a week. Wow. I'm doing great. And maybe that's why Jeremiah, you noted prior to the start of this episode that uh, you, I seemed happier than usual. I think I'm let's doing make the next. Uh, let's make the next section of your personal development journey recycling. Uh, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> at least these aren't in a landfill. Uh, they're not. They're actively. That is true. 
it's better for the trash to just stay in your house like rather than in some pile of dirt that you don't have to think about for the rest of your life like i get why we're not fans of landfills but like is it better for to be in a pile somewhere with a bunch of other crap or to be in your house well they're not rusting and sending those gases into the ozone if that's a thing or whatever they're they're aluminium let's be real if i recycle these they're just going to be stomped on by some people and thrown in i mean they're not they're barely going to be sifted out from the recycling bin i don't aluminum aluminum is very recyclable it, it is aluminum I is actually one of the easiest things to recycle i just don't trust that my single stream recycling comp the company that picks up my recycling and moved it recently to single like before it was single stream it was like you have to separate your recycles and i would put them out uh all nice and separated nice and neat and they would all dump them into the same fucking truck. So I was like, what am I? Why? And then they finally were like, okay, you don't have to do single stream anymore. You can just like put it all together. I just don't really believe that they're doing all the right things with the product that I'm providing. I don't think that's happening. And therefore, well, I'm going to give better you some... for to stay in the basement <laughs> at exactly. your feet. I'm saving the planet. <laughs> How about if I give you something we can all believe in? How about okay. that? Okay, all right, sounds it. good. Good segue. I love good that segue. segue. So the story that we're going to be talking about today is less of a book and more of like it's like an it's it's the director's cut of the book of Daniel. It's uh, like an it's EP. A, it's like this is chapter fourteen of the book of Daniel. Oh, okay. Which is part of the apocrypha, and it's commonly called Baal and the Dragon. Wait, Whoa. wait, wait, wait. That's a Ch way better name than most of the books of the Bible. Why is this? I, I need some <laughs> clarification. Why is it chapter? Is the book of Daniel only 13 chapters? I don't know. Uh, why I don't is know this, if this is like a is it like a or is it like um what's the what's the uh floor that hotels don't have 13? It's like <laughs> is it like that where it's like it goes from chapter 12 to 14 and then they're just like uh, I believe actually it is 12 chapters. The book of Daniel's 12 chapters, because there's another apocrypha that's the story of Susanna, which is Daniel chapter 13. And then Holy Baal shit. and the dragon is Daniel 14. Love it. So it is like a hotel. No 13th floor, no 13th chapter. I'm here for this. Yeah. So this is like, uh, yeah, it's like that floor that no longer exists in that one hotel in Vegas. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. Extra book of Daniel. And, uh, this is uh, this gives us a couple of other cool stories about Daniel and some of his exploits. And I think after reading this, it's pretty clear why they decided that this <laughs> wasn't a fit. It's, like we just it's don't something. recall him having a passionate, romantic exchange with a dragon. That didn't, just, didn't seem to fit the narrative. It's like he overcame lions and then he overcame on a dragon and that oh just didn't God, <laughs> like, we don't love the shit dude. and then someone was like i'm gonna write this movie called shrek where a donkey <laughs> where a donkey falls in love with a dragon i like okay <laughs> so the book starts out with uh you know cyrus being king of persia cyrus the great and cyrus actually a super interesting guy um it, it basically says King Astyages was gathered to his fathers, meaning he died, and Cyrus of Persia received his kingdom. So he kind of came into his throne. Interesting note about uh, Cyrus. So apparently Astyages was his grandfather, I guess. And it's it, all is kind of speculative. It all comes from Xenophon, who was a sort of historian back in ancient Greece. But... Uh, Apparently, Astyages had like dreams about this grandson of his killing him and supplanting him, taking his throne. So sure, he common. ordered he ordered this guy. Oh man, what, it's what like meta this? paranoia right there. That's I hear that. Yeah, so he orders uh, this this guy. Um, God, I'm I'm missing his name here. Harpagus, who is a general of his, to to kill the baby right before you know as soon as it's born harpagus doesn't want to spill royal blood so he sneaks the baby out of the kingdom and gives it to a bunch of shepherds to raise like a shepherd family 
So right around the age of 10, young Cyrus the Great gets in a dispute with a nobleman's son and just beats the ever-loving crap out of him (laughs) and draws some attention to himself. Hmm. So in the process of questioning him and stuff like that, apparently it gets back to uh, ask the ages that, that this is Cyrus, that he wasn't actually killed. And so he lets him return to his parents and, and finish Wait, out how? his childhood there. He was stolen away as a baby. They're like, oh man, I heard the story of this 10 year old King. You're not going to believe this. This 10 year old beat the crap out of this kid. He's like, Ooh, there's only one baby that could grow up. Maybe the shepherds <laughs> cracked under pressure. They're like, it's not even our kid, man. Like we're doing this as a favor, and yeah, now he's not ours. No not ours. Kid. We don't know who. They, I mean, this <laughs> weird kid came from the castle direction. Uh, was wearing a bunch of silk clothes and stuff when we got him. I have no idea. I don't he know. He was it's basically weird. like a kid screaming at Target, and his parents just like left the cart in the toy aisle and <laughs> walked off. <laughs> they were like, he had a purple security blanket that came with him. They're like, nobody has purple but royalty. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> it's the rules. That was so pre- as- social security numbers. I mean, what do they do? How do they verify that children were even your own? You that the good old days were if you didn't have a child, you could take anybody's and you could raise it as your own, and nobody <laughs> would know. I mean, you just yeah. have to move. You just have to move really far away, like a quarter mile, where none of those <laughs> yeah. people had ever interacted with <laughs> like each other outside before. of walking over just the horizon. Probably- all you really need to do is just geographically relocate so you're closer to a different well. And no, nope, <laughs> that family will never find you. <laughs> you might as well be on a different continent. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a different area code. It's it's basically China. Yeah, we don't go there. I mean, I'm not going to walk an extra mile for water. My par- My parents might be dead by the time I get home. <laughs> <laughs> so as the ages lets Cyrus the Great go back to his family and finish out his childhood there. But finish out his child. I like how they talk about it like it's completing school. Well, I'm using I'm using like <laughs> I'm filling in the blanks for Xenophon here. They let him go be unkidnapped back with his family. <laughs> <laughs> so kidnapped now. This we had a good run. We got a lot of free labor out of you. Just go resume your your kingly duties. He's like Harry Potter coming out from under the stairs. <laughs> yeah, the fucking carrier pigeon come and deliver a message to him. So Harpagus, you know, ends up uh, being punished for this. But so Astyages orders his son be captured without his knowledge. He butchers him, has a feast, and then serves Harpagus, his own son at the feast. Holy shit. That's fucking metal as shit, dude. <laughs> Harpagus like finds out because after he's eaten, they bring out like the kid's head in a stew pot and set oh it before gosh. him. So later on, when Cyrus the Great does like come of age and he raises an army and he's going to challenge as the ages grip on power. Part of the reason that he wins is because Harpagus defects to cyrus's side and helps him defeat ah interesting switcheroo probably none of that happened but it is a fun story this is already a story that would make a great film that's true we're missing so many great i mean can you imagine that scene played out on the big screen everyone's eating they're like oh this is good this is some good ass soup thanks so much and then they like roll out ahead in a pot and they're just like that's fucking cool i mean that part's pretty sick but i'm thinking earlier in the movie like it ought to start with a montage of this baby being stolen away from his family and then growing up and you know coming into his own and then it just hard cuts right to him beating the crap out of this kid just yeah. beating him for like five revenge. minutes on the screen good, this could be a solid <laughs> revenge film i the tiger playing it's, it's like, like some artistic license let him beat the kid to death just like, like let's open the movie that way like a, like that scene from a christmas story where the the boy finally unleashes on Scott Farkas. <laughs> so none of that is in the uh, the apocrypha. It is just a sideline. Uh, wait, wait, what is that in? It's in uh, Xenophon's book. Okay, whatever it's called. So Chicken it's like soup for the Greek soul. It's the appendix <laughs> to the apocrypha, or completely unrelated. 
It's completely unrelated. Okay, so this isn't like... It just mentioned Cyrus of Persia, so I... I, Okay, okay, so this isn't... As soon as it said Cyrus, I was like, oh, I guess I'm listening to uh, King of Kings, the Hardcore History series again. So I've been Uh, doing that all day. That's why I bring that uh, up. Oh, okay, I I haven't listened to that one. I I never actually got around to listening to that one. You bring in some... It's so good. Yeah, you bring in some real facts, man. You bring in some hardcore history facts. Okay, so this isn't like... It's not like an appendix like it's the second uh after credit sequence after a marvel movie or something like it is totally unrelated to the apocrypha totally unrelated almost okay. like this story is totally unrelated to reality and daniel so, <laughs> so cyrus of persia is the king and it says and daniel conversed with the king and was honored above all of his friends uh so keep that in mind as we go through this story daniel and the king are best buds was cyrus the king during the rest of daniel yes i don't know why he's in babylon because he's the king of persia he's like the the founder of the achaemenid empire he conquered babylon at some point not clear why he's in babylon in this story got it okay right i think i got it um they have good bath houses i'm pretty sure i guarantee you they did Get the skunk smell off. Wait, Nebuchadnezzar. <laughs> sorry, Nebuchadnezzar was the um was the king for the rest of Daniel. I think he in was the king if if on the Daniel timeline, Nebuchadnezzar was the king when he was first when Daniel first showed up. When he was an old man, was it Belteshazzar? Like his Belteshazzar. son or something was the oh, king yeah, Bel- and then the ghost of hand appears and writes yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. meanie meanie tekamufarson on the wall. And then the Medes and the Persians invade and yeah, it's it's a that's the biblical timeline. It is not the historical timeline. Um, it says now the Babylon now the Babylons had an idol called Baal. In this case, it's spelled B E L, but I it seems like everywhere I looked, it was referencing Baal, the you know classic antihero of the Baal. Old Testament. Baal. Baal. And there were spent upon him every day twelve great measures of fine flour and 40 sheep, and six vessels of wine. So they were offering that as a daily sacrifice to Baal. 40 sheep? As yeah. a daily sacrifice. Apparently is this collected so. by all people? Like by the people of Babylon? As, we're in Babylon still, right? Yes. Apparently so. so. Holy it is shit. a ridiculous number that will come into play here in a second. Okay. I guess 40 is a very biblical number. Hence why... It's a shame that this is the Apocrypha, not the actual Christian Bible. <laughs> How much is a, a great measure of flour? I don't know. I've spent a lot of time wondering that myself, or like six vessels of wine. Like, what was a vessel? I'm assuming that's like a, a typical, like, oh, uh, not a flagon. What's the, um, a mirror? A pizza One hut cup. pitcher? No, that's not true. <laughs> that, was, <laughs> that was the first thing they showed up. I'm going to think of it as like a two liter bottle. It's a two liter clay pot. Does 1.125 bushels help? (laughs) No. (laughs) Thanks. (laughs) All right. uh, Let's fuck me. Uh, You know what? Move on. I'm not going to just go through each each and every Google search. It's a lot of food to be wasting on a statue. I think we can agree on that, right? (laughs) It's a lot of food. Yes. Yeah. Fair. And the king and the king worshipped it and went daily to adore it. Again, weird because Cyrus is the king of Persia and the Achaemenid Empire. For some reason, he is worshiping and adores the Babylonian god Baal. But Daniel worshipped his own god, and the king said unto him, Why dost not why dost not thou worship Baal? Who answered and said, Because I may not worship idols made with hands, but the living God who hath created the heaven and the earth, and hath sovereignty over all flesh. Then the king said unto him, Thinkest thou not that Baal is a living God? Seest how much he eateth and drinketh every day? This okay. king's so kind of dumb. This the, king's pretty stupid. The proof <laughs> is that. Like the greatest empire that the world had known to that point. By far. Biggest there was and he's like what do you mean the statue's not eating all of this stuff every day what are you what are you talking about if Baal's not god where's the flower <laughs> <laughs> that's the entire argument it's like 
I feel like there's like this little like secret section out back where they just keep putting all of the sheep and flour. <laughs> like... Basically, we're saying people have been saying then why are there still monkeys for thousands of yeah, years? Yeah, it's like they go. <laughs> Uh, then who's been eating all these sheep? And it's like at every single day at eight between the hours of eight and ten p.m. they clear everybody out and let's like move all the sheep into a pit a few miles away. Uh, you're getting like... ahead of the story here. <laughs> no way! Wow, I should have wrote the Bible, man. What the fuck did I do with my life? I should have wrote the Bible, Sam. <laughs> you still can. It's not too late to write my own. Start Sam, my it's own not religion. too late to move the wilderness start writing your own great work of uh art slash maybe a manifesto we could call it about yeah. your views towards put some sh- put some sheep in a pit blame it on god start a religion You're, maybe your you know give some details about your struggle yeah maybe <laughs> call it your struggle then daniel smiled and said "O king be not deceived for this is but clay within and brass without and did never eat or drink anything so the king was wroth, and he called for his priests and said IRA. to them, "Exactly, if ye tell me not who who this is that devoureth these expenses, ye shall die." He this was like the apparently the first time he'd ever thought about like the fact that maybe a supernatural being isn't eating a flock of yeah, sheep. Yeah, kind of, like, why am I why am I approving all these expense scrolls for, for six great measures of flour a day? <laughs> <laughs> but if ye can certify me that Bell devoureth them, then Daniel shall die, for he has spoken blasphemy <laughs> against Bell, and he's I, also my best friend. I love this. <laughs> it's good to be king. It's, it's like holy shit! Are you telling me the statues are eating these sheep? If you can prove it to me, I'll fucking kill Daniel. I'll kill him so fucking fast. <laughs> <laughs> and then the, the alternative is he's going to say like, and if he doesn't eat it, I'll kill all the priests. Like, I think he just woke up that morning. He's like, somebody's got to die for this. We have to kill people today because I'm shocked. Over something. That's how he deals with the feeling of surprise is just someone has to die. Someone has to be put to death. His yeah. birthday Anytime is someone dangerous. disagrees with him, he's like, all right, any of <laughs> Yeah, you put your money where your mouth is. Let me chop off your head. That surprise 40th birthday party that everyone threw for him did not end well. And Daniel said unto the king, let it be according to thy word. Now the priests of Baal were three score and ten, which is 70, beside their wives and children. Just say And 70. the king went with Daniel into the temple of Baal. So Baal's priest said, lo, we go out, but thou, O king, set on the meat and make ready the wine, and shut the door fast, and seal it with thine own signet. So basically, like, uh, you know, verify that there's nothing in the hat here, and then seal the door with your decoder ring, and let it be so. This is some, like, magicians, is this is your card type shit, is what we're dealing with right now. Exactly. They're going to Chris Angel this. The Nine of Diamonds? Yeah, the Nine of Diamonds, that's your card, right? It's the Nine of Diamonds? All right. I'm putting the Nine of Diamonds in the middle of the deck. It's in the middle of the deck now. You can now cut the deck. I mean, it's okay, the they're putting the a deck. seal on the door. This king, we've already established, not playing with the full deck here. Like, there's no way they could get around that. They couldn't just be like, oh, yeah, the seal's on the door. Can't you see from the throne? Look, there it is. Impossible. Well, and there, so, <laughs> yeah, sorry, your but, question. All right. And tomorrow when thou comest in, if thou findest not that the hat that hath eaten up all, we will suffer death, or else Daniel, that speaketh falsely against us. And they little regarded it, for under the table they had made a privy entrance, whereby they entered in continually and consumed those things. Dude, this is evangelicalism, right? It's like, we're not concerned with being right, we're just more concerned with, like, tricking you into believing the right thing. That's it. (laughs) It's like, it's the man behind the curtain kind of shit. It's like, we need to hold on to the fact that this is true. So what we're going to do is make a little curtain and cut a little hole in the ground. And we're going to, Oh, you guys see it's, it's working because you won't believe if it doesn't happen. And just because it doesn't happen, doesn't mean I don't believe, but I want to make sure you believe this is an essential part of every cult. Like this is awesome. you I have love to it. have like the faith healer element where you're pulling a fast one, but it's for the greater good because this is, these dumb people 
need these like shiny objects to, in order to believe the greater truth, which is yeah. that you're God and you should, they should let you have sex with their wives. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it does seem to always end up in one of a few, few areas. Very have few. you made a donation? It turns out only the pastors allowed to have wives in our village. Uh, you know, it just goes a few directions. It's either financial or sexual exploitation, but usually both. And it's like, it's, it's failed actress, Catherine Crick, hiring other failed actors and actresses to uh, i think you're just supposed to say actors so let me restart that failed actor Catherine crick and other failed actors pretending to have demons cast out of them that's kind of what we're looking at right now and then taylor swift said oh i love drinking blood (laughs) (laughs) so when they were gone forth the king set meats before Baal. Now Daniel had commanded his servants to bring ashes, and they and those they strewed throughout all the temple in the presence of the king alone. Then went then went they out and shut the door and sealed it with the king's signet, and so departed. Now in the night came the priests with their wives and children, as they were wont to do, and did eat up and drink up all. What are they now, just are they just eating raw flour? Like, <laughs> and sheep. And she, yeah, so not, I, not raw sheep there's, and raw there's a lot of things. I'm sorry, Casey, we keep interrupting you while you're trying to explain. Are there more details here? Are they cooking the sheep? Are they having a banquet? No, it appears that they're uh marinating it in wine and then flour batter, fry they dr- up sheep. They drowned a sheep in six inches of wine, they held its head under there while its body squirmed, and then they <laughs> ate it raw. Is that what we're is that what I'm hearing? Yeah. Exactly. So I did Google how much. Okay. And it's obviously it depends on how big the sheep are. Right. But it looks like the average, like a good average low end estimate for how much meat you would get off of a sheep if you were to slaughter it is about 40 pounds. So if we've got 40 sheep and 40 pounds of meat on each, that's 1600 pounds of meat a night that these people were eating it's 70 priests and their wives and their children so that comes out really should have reached out to poor people in the community yeah and you know maybe they were selling or whatever but that's 23 pounds of meat a night that these priests and their kids are eating (laughs) and like you know i so i I can't eat a 12 ounce steak by myself so if i so i hunt and each year, you know, my wife and I typically shoot a deer and then we butcher it and stuff ourselves and whatnot. And like there's there's the meat and then there's like everything else that's not meat that you have to do something with. And it's like a lot of stuff, bones and hide and organs, all this crap that's left over that you then have to do something with 40 of those. That's like a that's like a full production slaughterhouse basically to deal with that. And how long does it take you to butcher uh, a deer? I'm not very good at it, so it takes me like <laughs> eight eight to ten hours. But you've done it more than <laughs> once, which is presumably maybe more than some of these priests and priestesses have done. <laughs> You'd there. probably be pretty good at it if you were doing it 40 of them a night. Yeah. So, sharpened yeah. rocks or whatever they use. <laughs> the assumption that they're doing this every- the night to get rid of the stuff or they're just doing it this night because they have to like not get caught they were apparently doing it every night that's the gist of the story at sure least. okay so, um so in the morning the time the king arose and daniel with him and the king said daniel are the seals whole and he said yeah O king they be whole the baby yeah, seals king, they're going after they baby seals now come on And as soon as he had opened the door, the king looked upon the table and cried with a loud voice, Great art thou, O Baal, and with thee is no deceit at all. Then laughed Daniel and held the king that he should not go in and said, Behold now the pavement and mark well whose footsteps are these. And the king said, I see the footsteps of men, women, and children. And then the king was angry. Did the king not see these footsteps right when he looked the first time? Because again, he seems kind of dumb. Apparently, he didn't <laughs> notice them right off the bat. So it's a good thing. So yeah, Daniel spread ashes all over the floor. 
and the priest in them left footstep footprints behind, which evidenced that they were the ones eating it. Right. I love that they included children in this too. Like that's yeah, they're not done with their part yet. That's a nice rite of passage. Eating forty sheep. <laughs> And the king was angry and took the priests with their wives and children who showed him the privy doors where they came in and consumed such things as were upon the table. Therefore, the king slew them and delivered Baal into Daniel's power, who destroyed him and his temple. Wait, I saw another thing. Okay, it's one thing to eat 23 pounds of meat, but they're doing this like in the locked room, like right so that nothing can get out. That means they ate the fur, the bones. It's like like, that, they took them through the trap door. It's like they seem like think about that pull down attic staircase and, yeah. and trucking forty sheep up into your attic. It's the same as that. But like, if you could do that, don't eat them. Just cut them into pieces and carry them out all night. Like you have your a bunch of kids and stuff. You have so many people to help do this. That's a way better plan than eating everything raw. It, it's this plan fa- doesn't make any sense. No, this it's is a bad plan. It's a lot faster to quarter them and move them than it is to actually like, be like i guess we have to eat all of them it's also so like your kids down just hand them a hunk of leg and be like start chewing <laughs> yeah you could just put this outside in a pit but you have to eat the entire thing and then hopefully you don't die of overfilling your stomach it's also with all like the, the uh all the fur or whatever sheep have fur what do you fleece the fleece Whoa. Wool. wool it's um mm-hmm. it's like the steve brule sketch where he like rips out his pubes and has to eat and chew on it. <laughs> <laughs> but t- times an entire sheep times 40 <laughs> yeah, you gotta eat a pound of hair a year or, or else winter man's not gonna come <laughs> so yeah basically uh Daniel exposed Baal for being uh, false, and so the king killed 70 families. (laughs) Holy shit. (laughs) That's more families than pretended to eat sheep. And I tell you what, if I was that guy's best friend who had just spared being killed, I'd be like, wow, I feel great about how this whole thing went. (laughs) I'm really glad I called them on this. (laughs) This You are my my true bosom friend. (laughs) (laughs) So that is part one. of Part uh, one. Bell and the Dragon. Now you guys want to hear some dragon story? Yeah. Is there how many parts are there? Is it two? There's technically three, but that's the longest part for sure. Yeah, I feel like the first part of the story did not have any dragons in it at all. Very all right, few dragons. Well, we go from verse 22, which is about the king killing all those families, to verse 23, and it says, "In that same place, there was a great dragon." Now, see which if it they was me, of Babylon I would... worshipped. I would have started a new chapter. That feels like a natural story break. <laughs> he killed all the kids who ate the sheep. Also, there's a dragon. Hard break. Yeah, that's why this uh, didn't get canonized, because it felt rushed. <laughs> they should have split it into two, like, uh, you know, the last Harry Potter movie. There's a lot of parallels between this and Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> or I the Hobbit. That's why evangelicals don't like it. Uh. And the king said unto Daniel, Wilt thou also say that this is of brass? Lo, he liveth, he eateth, and drinketh. Thou canst not say he is no living God. Therefore, worship him. So it's basically like the king just calling his bluff. He's like, yeah, okay, well, yeah, Baal's not real because he can't eat sheep. Uh, But the dragon is definitely real and does eat all sorts of things. Sheep canned ham cigarette butts whatever <laughs> so i mean will you worship him then Dan- uh then daniel said unto the king i will worship the lord my god for he is the living god but give me leave o king and i shall slay this dragon without sword or staff the king said i he give fucks the leave. dragon to death holy shit <laughs> he makes I the dragon wish that was my oh no <laughs> i knew this was I mean, okay. I've talked a lot about turning these biblical stories into like awesome 300 esque style films. I think it's finally time we get a Daniel and the Dragon porno, though. Is anyone with me? No, sure. No. Damn, I'm not. I'm. I think I'm out on that one. <laughs> All right. Well, to each their own. I think uh, that I would know what I'm going to think like, about tonight. That would be best done with like bad CGI. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that's the first Kickstarter this podcast should launch, but uh... 
<laughs> Hell yeah. So I've seen worse Kickstarters the... for films. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I've seen worse. So right, ahead, Casey. it's funny because historically, like Cyrus is one of the things that he's famous for is Cyrus is kind of like wrong a lot. The, he's the anti Assyrian, basically. Like the Assyrians just conquered everyone and destroyed them and just pillaged their entire existence. And they controlled everything through like fear and dominance, right? And did so for a long time. Cyrus is kind of like the first person to come along and piece together an emperor, an empire, not just with like, you know, dominance and war and stuff like that, but also with diplomacy. And one of the things that he was, uh, you know, kind of that he's historically lauded for is like religious tolerance and letting these different areas of his empire worship the gods that they want to and even paying respects to them and stuff and in in a matter of like 23 verses he's basically killed the entire clergy of Baal which is the most important god in in uh, Babylon right and now he's given Daniel clearance to go try to kill their other god the dragon <laughs> I can't wait to find out if this dragon's real because I, here's what's going on right now is mm -hmm. he was like, no, Bale really eats this stuff. And I don't know if he believed it, but he maybe it was to keep order. But either way, it was like, turns out Bale doesn't really eat this stuff. And that pissed him off. And maybe it pissed him off because Daniel found out that it was true and he it was proven before plenty that it was true. So he's like, I have to kill everyone involved because if this gets out, fucked we need this god we need people to worship this god if he looks if he looks weak then we're in trouble so that could be like the real thought process there is like anyone who knows about this is dead for some reason he doesn't kill daniel but he does daniel was already a naysayer conspiracy theorist about bail so no one's gonna listen to that bitch anyway <laughs> and he goes oh yeah no but we also have this dragon does cyrus think this dragon's real I can't wait to find out because it's very easy for him to be like, no, no, no. Yes. This is a great idea. Yes. Please try to go kill this dragon. I uh, send him on like a frivolous quest to, to die in the process. I have an alternate theory. Um, we've established this King alternate facts. Maybe not the smartest. Well, let me just pose a question to you this way. If you had two gods that you worship in your kingdom, one of the gods uh, was a dragon and the other god was a statue which one do you think you're supposed to be feeding 40 sheep and a bunch of wine to every day <laughs> like uh, if someone was writing down directions <laughs> is it possible someone just flipped those around and the kid was like yeah i mean you give it to the statue obviously like obviously <laughs> Yeah, like, like, I, is it possible he just messed that up? It's like when you go away for the week and someone comes to house sit and feed your pets and you <laughs> yeah. accidentally write down which pet gets which food and which bin. You're like, oh shit, my cat's been eating dog food all week and my dog's been eating cat food. Is it's that so what we're dealing with, Jeremiah? <laughs> I, I'm just wondering. It's like, I feel like, what are they feeding the dragon? Because if you're telling me they're not feeding the dragon as one of their other gods, somebody messed that up. <laughs> hey, it says he eateth and drinketh and whatnot. So those are stupid prophets of Baal. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the king gives Daniel permission to, to try and kill the dragon without a sword or a staff or whatever. Right. So it says, then Daniel took pitch and fat and hair and did seethe them together and made lumps thereof. <laughs> so he this basically already feels like a Tim and Eric sketch. He made like muffins of of pitch, fat, and hair, which I don't know. That's like the day olds at Starbucks. <laughs> 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 it's like it's like uh it's basically like a fiber one bar yeah <laughs> so he uh he mixes is that pitch. like tar is pitch like tar like a, from a tar pit that's that's what i understood it to be yeah so i, I don't know pitch fat and hair 
Um, he made lumps thereof. This he put in the dragon's mouth, and so the dragon. Whoa, burst whoa, 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 thunder. whoa, dude! Shut the fuck up. We didn't. There is no quest. There is no climbing mountains. It's just yes, you could kill it, and so he took pitch and hair. And buttons like, like, and strings the and cat whiskers, and he put them straight into this dragon's <laughs> mouth. When did he get to the dragon? <laughs> the dragon was like a mile away. Like everything was, it was way Just different. Laying down with his mouth open, he sleeps like a. Well, that's normal for dragons, right? Yeah, He's sleeping on top of his gold between coins. him and the next water source. <laughs> yeah, mouth is open. He's like, oh, I'm so hungry. Snoring. Normally the priests come to feed me. This is like the Achaemenid equivalent of, of feeding seagulls Alka-Seltzer. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically what happened. Turns out dragons love pitch. You just have to, what's this? What's this? You shake it around. Covered in hair. This tastes just like those sheep that I've always said I love eating. <laughs> oh my God, God, I wish they brought me some sheep. It, <laughs> I love the lack of narrative there. It's just, yeah, you could kill this dragon. He's instantly shoving a fistful of hair and fat and pitch into its mouth. And that does what, Casey? Sorry. He Commence. bursts in sunder. He, he explodes. In, in sunder? Yeah, like he, his stomach rupture, I think, is what it's trying to say. Again, this is okay. like, it's it's a fiber one bar. Sunder. I almost grabbed my oh, pants the okay. first time I ate one of those. <laughs> Sunder, it's like, uh, what were the cliff bars were big when we were in college? Everyone ate fucking cliff bars to lose yeah. or some shit. Uh, Sunder, I didn't realize, means just split apart. So he burst, he, yeah, he burst in Sunder. He split apart. All right. So he burst a dragon in two <laughs> with a fistful of hair and pitch and fat. Yeah. What happens next? It's cause. like dark chocolate sure. for uh, schnauzers. It's who, like when who, you, yeah, you give your dog a grape. <laughs> who wrote this book? Daniel? <laughs> Daniel, <laughs> Daniel wrote his own legacy. It was like the first part was like, that's good. And then like a few years later, he hadn't had a hit since. And he's like a little, like he's a little washed up has been. He's like, I got this. I got Daniel part two right here. And he's, he's, he's like that guy two. at work that you, he's got a million stories and you slowly figure out that he's been lying to you the entire time. Or that guy you went to college with who you might've shared a dorm room with. He has a Fox body Mustang that that's 1200 horsepower. Yeah. I worked with a guy like that. No, I worked with a guy who had, remember the neon SRT four when it came oh, out? Yeah. Yeah. With cool cars, he swore up and down. He said it has the same chassis as the Viper, and like I kept to him, I was like, "It's not <laughs> the neon. It's the Dodge Neon. Like it, it's the it's the chassis of a neon with a bigger motor." He's like, "No, it's got all the tech from the Viper in it. Like the seats look like Viper seats, and the gauges are white, just like the Viper. I'm like they are white, just like the Viper. That's true." <laughs> <laughs> it's like I don't know. I don't know that you know what chassis means. <laughs> <laughs> okay so um and daniel said lo these are the gods ye worship so he really rubbed it in uh when they of babylon heard that they took great indignation and conspired against the king saying the king is become a jew and he hath no! destroyed it. <laughs> <laughs> turns out that's been an insult for a really long time <laughs> <laughs> that didn't age well did it <laughs> that's a little problematic <laughs> I, I was like listening to this like a youtube video of somebody reading this like uh like an audiobook basically it's some sort of organization that does that that and uh the guy put a lot of emphasis on that, which it's, sounded really funny was kanye like, reading this <laughs> well the author's like and then the king he became one of those people <laughs> who control everything. <laughs> the king's just around here controlling everything. The king has become a Jew, and he hath destroyed Bel. He hath slain the dragon and put the priest to death. So they came to the king and said, Deliver us, Daniel, or else we will destroy thee and thine house, uh, King Cyrus of the Achaemenid Empire, the, the largest empire ever ever formed to this point <laughs> so it's just like a band of jerk offs in babylon apparently that are threatening to kill him right. so it says now when the king saw that they pressed him sore 
being constrained, he delivered Daniel unto them, his his best bud, right? He said, who cast him into the lion's den where he was six days. Okay. So and with the lion's den was okay. Whoa, whoa. Again whoa. with the lion's den. Is this is this the same lion's den? Are we working on alternate timelines? Is this a parallel universe? I'm very confused about what's going on right now. There is a lot of discourse about that, whether or not this is referencing the same trip to the lion's den, oh, or this is a different like, one, but it does have different details. I just finished playing Bioshock Infinite last night, and now I'm stuck on this parallel universe, alternate reality. It's a good ideas, game. And it's a fantastic game. I never played the DLC, so I'm just getting into that now. And uh, but that whole game deals with like every character is another person in a different reality. And this one person can open tears to go into those other realities. And I feel like that's what we're dealing with right now. And uh, it's very it's almost uh, too coincidental. Well, and in the traditional Daniel in the Lion's Den story, he spent three days and nights in the Lion's Den. This time, it is it is like he's trying to outdo his his first story because he spends six days in the Lion's Den. Oh my God, he's and, going to he just it's just when you when you meet people who just have to be better all the time, it's just too much. Mm-hmm. Daniel just seems like a lot. It's like, oh, I'll slay this dragon with a fistful of hair and meat parts. It's like in the first Lions Den story, he just was like in there praying and then came out. That yeah, was it. Right? Yeah. This is kind of like one of those where it's like that that same guy at work. Like he tries to legitimize the lie by adding unnecessary details. That's you know? how cops know like, you're like when you, cops interrogate people, it's like when you're too specific, they're like, All right, I think this guy's full of shit. <laughs> Also, when you um, know that, that par- that makes you paranoid, too. I feel like the more you know, I feel like everybody watching crime dramas for the past decade is like a huge disservice. Because if you ever get interrogated, all you're thinking about is what you've learned about how interrogations work from watching all this shit. And you're like, if I give too much detail or if I repeat the same information the same way more than once, then they're going to think I'm lying because they're going to think I rehearsed it. But really, I just remember this specific detail quite well and can reiterate it twice. But if I try too hard to throw them off, I might be too inconsistent. And they'll go, you didn't get your facts right. And then you're straight to jail. It's a it's a lot. I'm terrified yeah. of ever getting get a lawyer. Terrified. Don't talk. Don't yeah, tell that's them stories. Get a lawyer. And that's something we can also learn from tr- crime dramas is if you lawyer up, you're not guilty. You just if there's one thing we've learned from society, from crime dramas, from TikTok videos of people getting pulled over and videotaping their interactions. It's that you can't trust cops. <laughs> You're a very anti-cop. That is for sure. This is an interesting detour we've taken from the story about killing the dragon. I'm not 100% sure. Dragons are cops, here. Jeremiah. Dragons okay, are cops. No, I got it. I, that's actually on me for not following that. Feed them some hair. Try that next time. That's I've heard what, it works. Every t- I'm going to have a bag full of hair, and every time they get pulled over, we're going to be like, here, eat this. <laughs> you're going to be like, <laughs> you're going to give them like the ca- trying to call a squirrel over. You're like, that'll be really funny until you get a ki- one like very, very devout Catholic cop is going to be like, oh, I don't think so. <laughs> oh, I know this trick. <laughs> I remember this from catechism. <laughs> And in the den, there were seven lions, and they had given him, them every day two carcasses and two sheep. Which, again, just <laughs> the, not enough sheep. The ones that Bale didn't eat. <laughs> so they've, been, they've been giving them sheep until very recently. <laughs> and then the, whoever shows up with the sheep just hasn't been coming by for some reason. The prophet's stuffed, fat little kids would give them the leftover sheep that they just couldn't eat without vomiting. <laughs> they're t- they're the 14 pounds of their 23 pound daily allotment uh which were then not given to them uh to the intent they might devour daniel so basically they've been holding back the sheep to make sure that they're nice and hungry so that they will eat daniel because i guess they were worried that maybe they wouldn't 
Um, and I've seen several videos from Chinese zoos. If you go in there, they will eat you. <laughs> They'll do it quick. <laughs> you don't want to go in there. <laughs> uh, hang on. Okay, I missed this a second. I missed this earlier. Um, <laughs> verse 33, it says, Now there was in Jewry <laughs> a prophet called Habakkuk. Okay. Whoa. Whoa. That's a word that we're using now, apparently. Uh, I'll tell you, made... no, Daniel didn't write this. He would never, he he might stoop as low as lying about dragons, but he would never write jewelry. <laughs> Drop a hard Uri. <laughs> the king is engulfed in jewelry. He killed a dragon. No, there was in jewelry a prophet called Habakkuk who made pottage and had broken bread in a bowl and was going into the field for for to bring it to the reapers. Um, so he made a he made some pudding and uh, a bowl of bread, and was headed out to the field to hand it off to some of the the people working there. But the angel of the Lord said unto Habakkuk, "Go carry the dinner that thou hast into Babylon unto Daniel, who is in the lion's den." And Habakkuk said, "Lord, I never saw Babylon, neither do I know where the den is." It's just all problems when there's an angel asking you to do something. I, he's asking for more specific directions. Were the Denny's? Probably a good idea. Are we asking what the fuck is up in this Denny's? That's more or less, yes. That's what it would translate to in an NIV. This is King James. Uh, then the angel of the Lord you are a King took James him by the James. crown. I Well, the Apocrypha is King James only, I think. <laughs> Interesting. Actually, I don't know. I only saw it in King James. I didn't do a ton of looking around, but uh, I wonder I'm, if there's a bunch of translations. There must be. No there's one's going to let be. King James be the only one to put his fingerprint on this. <laughs> Somebody in the 40s definitely edited out Jewry, I bet. <laughs> or edited that one in. I, it's possible that that wasn't originally there. That was an add-on. <laughs> they were like, well, this is, yeah, 1946. We should probably just call it what it is. That that revelations line about adding things to the book, uh, that doesn't apply because this isn't canonized. Yeah, it's not technically the Bible. So he, you can add slurs to it and not get the plagues written there and added to you, right? Isn't that what the thing is? Is like he who addeth unto this book, I will yeah. add unto him. Yeah, yeah. The in Revelation, yeah, he'll add unto you all the all the torture and pestilence and pale horses and what a wars. nervous job it would have been translating it like would you just be i <laughs> know like watching out of your periphery for like an abundance of frogs just christ like, slitting your throat <laughs> <laughs> sneaks up it's... on you so what basically like the, the angel take? uh takes habakkuk by the hair of his head, it says, and through the vehemency of his spirit, set him in Babylon over the den. So basically, he grabbed him by the hair and threw him into Babylon. And into this Alliance. is the Habakkuk who wrote the book of Habakkuk, right? I imagine there's only one Habakkuk. <laughs> there's only ever sure. been one. It wasn't a common name. No one else <laughs> ever had it. We're dealing it's not with like that Peter problem. or John, where it just continually pops up. Like there is no like. Habakkuk of Cedarville or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Cedarville, Ohio? Yeah. All right. It could be a Habakkuk That's there. Specific. <laughs> uh, and Habakkuk cried saying, Oh, Daniel, Daniel, take the dinner which God hath sent thee. And Daniel said, Thou hast remembered me, O God, neither hast thou forsaken them that seek thee and love thee. So Daniel arose and did eat, and the angel of the Lord set Habakkuk in his own place again immediately. So basically just like door dashed him some porridge <laughs> and then chucked him back to wherever he was hanging out before. The field. The field. He's back in the field. Upon the seventh day, the king went to bewail Daniel. What? It bewail. That's a weird word. Does that mean like mourn? I, I honestly I beat on him. No idea. I, I have no idea. Yeah, I, I, he waited a week to bewail him. That feels like morning like bewail. Yeah. Let's go uh, Google it right now. 
the old Googler, express great regret, disappointment, or bitterness over something. You've been properly Cyrus derailed. also referred to himself as the king of the universe. Oh, that's bold. I like it. Yeah. But, you know, there was a mob of morons <laughs> told him he needed to kill his best friend. So he threw him in a lion's den and then waited a week to uh, check on him. And, and when he came to the den, he looked in and behold, Daniel was sitting. Then cried the king with a loud voice, saying, Great art, Lord God of Daniel, and there is none other beside thee. And he drew him out and cast those that were the cause of his destruction into the den, and they were devoured in a moment before his face. So <laughs> then it did go full Chinese zoo video. <laughs> they died immediately. <laughs> Well, that's hey, pleasant. If is that, that the reference end of the is story? lost on you, just Google Chinese zoo lion attack. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm definitely not going to do that. And, and it, <laughs> it's been banned from YouTube, so you need to find it somewhere else. There is a video. I don't a actually know. I'm wondering, could I watch a video? <laughs> could I watch a video of someone getting? I don't think I could. I've. I don't think I've ever seen an actual video of someone getting killed. Has that, have you guys actually ended up? I know Faces of oh, Death was big, yeah. but I've never. I don't several times a week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Well, we know you're lame. Uh, I I'm not no. looking for them. It's just like your algorithms are footage. Fun. It's just it's like, like you're scrolling through Instagram, and then here's a video of a Russian soldier like stepping on a landmine basically okay it's gopro <laughs> yeah. footage well i think casey and i we can send you a lot of videos sam yeah, if you'd like i guess to. i just don't that's not <laughs> don't worry the group the chat hasn't there. recognized that as my passion at this point so i uh yeah i think the last time that you the last time that you actually got to record an episode with us you and i were watching a video of it was like uh, golden eye footage of Ukrainian oh, of special Ukrainian forces. Trench. Yeah, yeah. In the trench. Mm -hmm. Okay. That, that, I have that to... was like 10 guys. <laughs> no, Let me no. just clarify that I don't go around looking for entertaining video videos of people dying. But over the years, you see, uh, you see things. You've never seen Bud Dwyer? No, I've, I've honestly seen never seen a video of someone getting killed. Bud Dwyer died for our sins. <laughs> because of our sins or for our sins <laughs> how do we go I don't, sins, I how do we get back to where like to wrap this up well that's the end of the story so cyrus the great uh he acknowledged the one true god and i guess in a way you could say he did become a jew it all worked out is what you're saying i like i if stories just like Christian cinema, if stories don't end with everyone becoming Christians, it's not worth it. So I appreciate this story because there's a lot of stories in the Bible where everyone just gets killed at the end for not believing in the right God. And I like <laughs> that things happened a little differently this time. Well, and uh, one guy, one guy, one believed guy in survived. God. Yeah. It's, I, I mean, 70 it's priests and their families got murdered. And then a whole bunch of people got pushed into a lion's den. Exactly. But when you think about it, and when you dwell on the message that we all received, I mean, aren't we all dead in our trespasses? Didn't they just get what they deserved? Yes. Except sure. for Cyrus, because he converted and was, I mean, let's, let's, let's be real. That's the premise for the um, Inquisition. Woo, that was a weird delay. The Inquisition. That's the premise for... The Crusades? The Crusades. That's, you know, that's all. I mean, convert or a die. A lot of cool, right things. Yep. <laughs> Being right is what's important. I think that's what we're getting at, everybody. <laughs> Birch. I think what we're getting at is ultimately the most important thing is not just being right, but being unable to accept that anyone else might have a valid idea and, and just pushing that to the fringe as um, being part of the woke mob or listening to liberal media or just Worshiping another items. conspiracy theorist. You know, there's just a lot of ways you could word it and all are good. Uh, you just need to pick the right wording to denigrate the person that you disagree with the most in, in the most efficient way. And that's kind of what we're advocating for here. Yeah, that's evangelism. <laughs> that's evangelism. Spreading the good word.
sometimes a good word is a bunch of bad words about other people. <laughs> I think that's kind of the course of modern evangelicalism. <laughs> I love it. That's perfect. So, yeah, uh, that's that's uh, Bale and the Dragon. And Daniel I and the Dragon. Daniel and the it's, Dragon's it's, dead? <laughs> there's, a, there's, a, there's a few different plot points that you could make the title out of there, but <laughs> I think that uh, it makes sense that this wasn't necessarily kept in the original uh, the original storyline. Yeah, the editing Daniel. process is there for a reason. You yeah. know, like you, you throw some ideas out, some of them work, some of them don't. A good editor can help you trim them. It's natural. It's part I mean, of the that's process. Ultimately, what director's cuts are. You ever watch a director's cut when you see that new scene and it's like, it feels like someone just like threw it in the middle and then it was like, the scene starts and it feels out of place and then it's over and it gets back to what you know is the actual movie. You go, this, yeah, I get why they cut that out. That doesn't, n- nothing about that felt right. And that's what this story feels like. Yeah. Most bonus scenes don't really make any sense to keep in. You know, Mm -mm. I think honestly, I think that's one of the things that you can give uh, Mormons credit for is that they they'll take a cue from from modern culture and decide that some things just aren't Bible anymore. (laughs) (laughs) Like maybe the way that they talk about certain types of people and stuff are just maybe not culturally uh, appropriate anymore or ever were really and should just go away. And some people make fun of them for for changing their their scripture. I think it's cool that they adapt it to modern standards. Yeah, and some maybe people more make, people should do that. Some people make fun of them for changing their minds. Some people make fun of them for being wrong in the first place. They can't win. I think that what we're getting at is that Mormons can't win. <laughs> <laughs> they are just so obviously wild and out on what they believe to be true. I I saw a headline uh, yesterday, and I, I'm trying to remember the timeline, but they said that the the Mormon church could be worth a trillion dollars in 10 years. Wow. I What is it worth now, I guess? Is a what lot. <laughs> Dude, they I own just... tons of property. They actually just got in trouble or in the <laughs> process of getting in trouble for how they're managing their property and stuff like that. Because they they own they have crazy amounts they're, of assets. They're writing things off that they shouldn't be writing off, aren't they? Well, they have like basically like uh, shell corporations that <laughs> hold this, like holding companies that hold the land. I have not done enough reading on this to explain it right, but yeah, the they, Mormon they, Church is the really strong game. in the Cayman Islands. I wouldn't be surprised, honestly. <laughs> they got a lot of money. Dude, I just found out that a guy that I love to listen to his videos on Instagram, Dan McClellan, and you should still, I still love him, but he's a textual, I mean, he's a, he's a, uh, academic, it's academic criticism of biblical text is what his whole lane is. So he responds to people like saying that the Bible means this or that or whatever. He does a lot of response videos, but he'll do a lot of videos on like, this is like the, textual criticism of the Bible and on this topic or that. And I mean, he's, he's a linguist uh, is what he's got. This is the really monotone guy. Yes. And he's got like a bunch of, he's got a couple of master's degrees, he's got his PhD. I mean, this guy is smart as a motherfucker and he's a Mormon. He's, I, I just found this out. I thought he was seventh day Adventist for some reason, but he's Latter day Saints. And he go he he just he's done a couple of videos recently on why he's like doesn't address his involvement with the Mormon church in the his videos. That uh, that's something other people point out. And it's like his his religious affiliation and why he finds value in participating in his religious community is separate from his ability to criticize biblical and extra biblical texts for what the actual meaning is. it's kind of can... like alito's vacations were separate and did not affect his ability <laughs> to make call on supreme court cases i get what he's saying i dude i love the reference and it dude, feels listen, like listen. i'm sitting with that tension now like <laughs> i get look you're smart and i get that you can tell me a lot about this thing but at the end of the day you are 
until you can tell me whether or not you actually believe Mr. Mormon got golden tablets from Mr. Michael, the angel, whatever, uh, is if you if you can tell me that you believe that that's true, I have a hard time grappling with any of the information you've provided with me so far. It's so sad to learn that some people you love are in uh, religions that you just don't care for, I guess. <laughs> What's his name again? Dan McClellan. And he's fucking, no, just listen. I mean, so you found that out where you like, behold, Dan McClellan hath become a Mormon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he killed my dragon with hair. Dan, yeah. <laughs> Well, I think anyway, listening that's... to that guy is like listening to someone. It's like reading. It's like an audio book of the book of numbers. It's, that's what it feels like to me. He it's speaks. Very dry. In a, yeah, he's kind of rote. He's kind of dry. But his information keeps me locked in. I think what he's I think the work he's doing is fantastic. I just want to hear how he fucking reconciles that shit with his religion. Because. It's wild to me. It doesn't make any sense. I, I'm guessing he, I'm guessing he's part because he's very affirming. You know, most Mormons aren't. Uh, I feel like he must be part of some like sect that is. I don't know why they're not like, hey, we're we're done with you because of what you think and feel and say online. Like, I feel like his reluctance to get into it. And this is way off topic now, but it's not a great way to close this out. Uh, but his reluctance to get into it feels frustrating because it's like, you can't just pretend like that doesn't matter to people because, because the information you're providing is valuable. Like people care now about you and what you think and who you are and how you reconcile being a Mormon with the things that you, the, the text that you criticize anyway. It's like Chris D'Elia making videos on consent. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. There it is. I was wondering what you were gonna present. You can always tell when Casey's winding one up. Yeah, you can't. I was. It gets hard to finish a thought sometimes because you see this bitch grin ear to ear. <laughs> so Nobody hard laughs harder at me than me. <laughs> it's so hard to focus sometimes. Ugh. Well, I hope you have enjoyed this presentation of Bell and the Dragon. Um, and if you like the show, leave us a review, share it with your buddies, uh, join our discord. Uh, and that's it. Thank you for listening. We'll talk to you next time. Bye.